evening. Thanks for tuning in. I might have to stumble through this a little bit just to get my ideas out, so bear with me. This video is on inductors, and it might take a while to arrive at it, but the whole purpose of this video is to create a catalog of the different types of inductors. But first I'll explain why I'm interested in inductors at the moment. This is kind of a note to self. Well, I was looking at crystals, crystal set radios. Crystal set radios. These are the simplest type of circuits you can create to remove the carrier signal from a radio signal and basically provide the audio f audio signal and just extract the audio signal and play it through speakers or headphones. So I'll try to get it on the screen as far as one of the simplest types of crystal set radio circuits you can build, even one without the requirement of a battery. And of course, this circuit relies on a variable capacitor and a variable inductor. Well, actually, it doesn't necessarily require both of them to be variable, just one or the other. Then I started looking on the internet at some of the different uh, FM receiver circuits you can build just from scratch and well here's an FM circuit FM receiver circuit and just for reference I'd like to point out that the capac or sorry the the inductor used in this particular circuit is 0.15 micro henrys and that's a fixed value inductor Um, just a personal note to self, I'd love to start experimenting with FM radio kits that you can buy on eBay for very cheap, and then I'd love to swap out the inductor and variable capacitor just to see if it's achievable to get other higher bands of frequency or higher higher radio bands so I'd love to try that if anybody listening has an answer as to how to achieve that simply please leave a comment below that's something I'm interested in uh, without getting too off topic one of the problems one of the problems I'm finding with do-it-yourself kits on eBay is that a lot of them include integrated circuits and I don't want that because I can't modify an integrated circuit and I don't know about you but I have a difficult time understanding what exactly is going on inside an integrated circuit because it's in a sealed package they start to get a little bit complex so I like to go back to this uh, radio book I have which shows one of the simplest uh, FM radio crystal set receiver type circuits and then I'd love to go there uh, go from there um, into further experimentation and modification who knows if I'll get to that point okay so sorry that's like almost five minutes now and I haven't even really explained inductors so just before I even get into the different types of inductors uh, here's a basic a basic definition the basic role of an inductor is to prevent the basic role of an inductor is to prevent any sudden changes in current from flowing through it under ac conditions an inductor's impedance reactance increases with frequency an inductor acts to block high frequency signals while allowing low frequency signals to pass through it 
by selecting the proper inductance value, it is possible to create high frequency chokes. Example RF slash electromagnetic interference chokes that, when placed in series with power or signal paths, will prevent RF or EMI from entering into the main circuit where they could introduce undesired hum and false triggering effects. Okay, now I will rely on the Wikipedia definition. An inductor, also called a coil, choke, or reactor, is a passive two-terminal electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field when electric current flows through it. An inductor typically consists of an insulated wire wound into a coil around a core. When the current flowing through an inductor changes, the time varying magnetic field induces an electromotive force voltage in the conductor. Described by Faraday's law of induction, according to Lenz law, the induced voltage has a polarity direction which opposes the change in current that created it. As a result, inductors oppose any changes in current through them. An inductor is characterized by its inductance, which is the ratio of the voltage to the rate of change of current. Okay, I don't know if I can get some good pictures of it. We'll see. But my textbook shows a figure where it shows the circuit drawings of how an inductor can be used in different ways. So there's the low pass filter coupling and in short the high frequency component is blocked. Now almost in contrast you've got the high pass filter bypassing in which the inductor diverts low frequencies to ground. You can hook up an inductor in series with a capacitor. This is called a series resonant circuit. And then there's a parallel resonant circuit which has a capacitor in parallel with an inductor. Okay, so I just mentioned the last two types of circuits, series resonant circuit and a parallel resonant circuit. And the difference is that impedance is lowest at resonant frequency or impedance is highest at resonant frequency. And I'm just guessing here, I'm actually have a, I actually have a question whether the resonance comes from the inductor itself. Okay, the next types of inductor circuits are boost converters, which basically is like a transformer. It can increase the voltage. And then there's um, a miscellaneous category, which basically just shows how an inductor can be used as a solenoid, as a relay, or a transformer. Just as a note to self, I'm wondering whether it's worthwhile to build a variable inductor for the sake of experimenting with radio design for trying to achieve different bandwidth for basically creating radios of different frequencies. 
and I guess I'm going to need to show some pictures but for example there was this FM receiver circuit which was like what was it 0.15 micro Henry's so if I went ahead and created a variable inductor what kind of values are achievable with a big invariable with a big variable inductor as opposed to some discrete components that you can just buy off of eBay even little variable ones okay I'm kind of drawing off of my textbook but inductors often when you read about them the topic will come up as to the type of core that is put through an inductor if there's no core at all well that's an air coil inductor and then the other type seems to be a ferrite basically an iron rod core and my textbook mentions a few mathematical calculations for calculating inductance depending on the core it's drastically increased if you have an iron core um, but I guess some of the factors without going into the math are like the coil diameter uh, the coil length the number of turns in the coil sometimes with the construction of the coil the coil will be multi-layered almost like the way windings in a motor look and then there's like spiral coil inductors but the geometry of the coil seems to matter and then there's toroidal inductors in which case the core thick core thickness is important the inside diameter is important the outside diameter is important and then my textbook goes into sort of outlining the point that real inductors or inductors in real life can have different properties making them behave somewhat dissimilar to mathematical formulas and there's different specifications for inductors I didn't understand them very well when I read them they start to get really complex uh, but then there's the maximum DC current saturation current self resonant frequency quality factor the Q factor there's temperature coefficients for inductance resistance it starts to get complicated and now hopefully it's been coherent up to this point uh, and now finally now I'm getting to identifying the different types of inductors so just briefly there's an air core inductor means there's nothing inside the loops of coil there's a fixed inductor high current power line chokes shielded SMD inductor maybe SMA surface mount epoxy conformal coated inductor an SMD inductor a toroidal SMD inductor a high current toroid inductor molded polypropylene RF choke coiled RF chokes a hash choke radial lead high current RF choke molded RF choke adjustable tuning inductor adjustable tuning inductor with screening can surface mount power inductors common mode P 
PC mount choke iron laminate. There's another table in my textbook that outlines typical applications for inductors. High frequency resonance circuits. This tends to be for radio frequency. Electromagnetic coupling. Uh, filter circuits. And switch mode power supplies. DC to DC converters. That might not be a complete list. Okay, this kind of covers what's been discussed already, but multi-layer chip inductors. These are looking like surface mount. These, I guess, have fewer parasitic characteristics and less resistive loss. They have excellent Q values. These multi-layer chip inductors are used for EMI, and RFI attenuation and suppression. Okay, the next type is molded inductors. And just to point out, uh, some of the details I'm mentioning for each of these inductors are not comprehensive. I'm just trying to pick out the most notable ones. Anyway, these molded inductors have small are small with axial leads for PC board mounting. The outer coating protects coil from the environment, comes in a shielded version as well. Frequency range is typically greater than 50 kilohertz. The application used in filters, AD converters, AM, FM radio, pulse generators, signal generators, switching power supplies, and telecom. The next type are shielded inductors. The magnetic shield is designed to prevent magnetic coupling and RF EMI interference issues, especially important in densely packed boards where signal corruption is a major concern. The shielded inductors can come in many different types of packages. Some of the applications include DC to DC computers, or DC to DC converters, computers, telecom equipment, filters, LDC dis displays, thing is, is I think that there's probably a lot of overlap with the applications for these inductors. So I want to be careful to just read off the list. Uh, the next one is conformal coated dipped inductors. These are inexpensive. Okay, the next type are high current chokes and it looks like it puts hash choke and RF choke in the same inductor type category. These devices utilize ferrite or powdered iron cores to achieve large inductance values for low coil count and small volume. Fewer turns translates into lower DC resistance, an important feature for high current applications. These are used in home appliances, communication systems, computer add-ons, DCFC, switching power supplies, transmitters, and uninterrupted power lines, or, and uninterrupted power supplies. Power line chokes. Power line chokes are used for filters, power supplies, RF I suppression, power amps, switching regulators, SCR and triac controls, and speaker crossover networks. Next category, wide band chokes. Wideband chokes attenuate unwanted signals and circuits without contributing to power losses at lower frequencies or DC impedance. This range from 20 to 500 ohms and are obtained over frequencies from 1 to 400 megahertz. Currents are limited only by number 22 or number 24 all wire gauge tin copper wire used in construction. Used mainly in PC boards to filter out EMI and RFI also used in RF circuits to suppress parasitic oscillation at VHF and, VA and UHF. Used in AD converters, communication systems, computer add-ons, and so on and so forth. Okay, the next type are toroids. These exhibit high inductance due to powdered iron or ferrite core and 
also display good self-shielding due to core shape. Good low EMI source, low coil count reduces DC resistance compared to other solenoid wound inductors. They come in a variety of types, small surface mount devices, large general purpose devices, and high power toroids that can handle very large currents. Toroids are also less susceptible to induced noise from other components as the applied magnetic field induces equal and opposite currents inside the toroid, thus cancelling interference. Toroids are used in a variety of different applications. They are used as chokes in AC power lines and to reduce EMI, also used in home appliances, audio generators, audio electronics, bandpass filters, audio visual equipment, and many more things. Uh, pot cores provide ultra high inductance value and high DC current ratings while maintaining a stable inductance due to high saturation currents and self shielding. Excellent Q values in a small size. Commonly used in telecom, audio, and automotive applications, used as DC chokes, differential mode chokes, filters, and in switching circuits. The next type of inductor is a Ballon choke, typically used in impedance matching applications. Ballon refers to a balanced, unbalanced transformation of impedance levels. Application used in AM, FM radio, television and communication systems, input-output boards, impedance matching, pulse generators, transmitters, and walkie-talkies. The next category, air coils range from a single loop of wire for ultra high frequencies to large coils wrapped around non-magnetic form. Air core inductors are used in high frequency applications requiring high Q characteristics. So I think maybe the key word here is high frequency. I did watch in another YouTube video that talked about lower frequencies used iron cores, higher frequencies used air cores. I don't know, that stands to be investigated, but I think that is a general purpose or a general principle of these air coil inductors. Um, air core inductors are used in high frequency applications requiring high Q characteristics where losses and distortion common in magnetic core inductors due to hysteresis and eddy currents cannot be tolerated. Without a magnetic core, however, these inductors have low inductance values used primarily for RF applications. I guess I'll emphasize once again that they have low inductance values. Low inductance values for air coil inductors. Used primarily for RF applications. Surface mount air coil are also available. The applications, these are used in RF resonant tank circuits for TV tuners, FM stereo receivers, garage door openers, pulse generators, RF power amplifiers, switching power supplies, RC toys, uninterrupted power supplies, and walkie-talkies. Adjustable inductors. <coughs> and for reasons I won't even cover. Air coil inductors are probably the type I'll be looking at. Adjustable inductors. Variable or tunable. Many use a slide contact along coils or more commonly a ferrite powdered iron or brass slug screwed into the center of the coil. The inductance changes as the slug is screwed in and out of the coil. Magnetic coils or magnetic cores increase the permeability or inductance, while brass slugs decrease inductance due to eddy current induction in a slug that reduces internal magnetic flux in the core. These devices are used to adjust resonant circuits that require high Q values, used in circuits requiring very narrow bandwidths. Application, typically used at frequencies above 50 kHz, used in LC resonant tank circuits, in AM, FM radio, TV, and other communication systems used in garage door openers, I.O. boards, oscillators, pulse generators, RF power amplifiers, signal generators, well, and so on and so forth. 
Common mode chokes. Common and differential mode chokes are used to eliminate noise on a pair of conductors. Common mode noise is defined as noise that is present in or common to both conductors and can be the result of induced noise caused by the antenna effect on a conductor or PC trace used to prevent EMI and RF interference from power supply lines for prevention of malfunctioning of electronic equipment. Common mode chokes usually have ferrite core material well suited to attenuate common mode current. So this is a common mode choke. The applications of these common mode chokes are very useful devices found in many radio circuits. They may help nearly they may help nearly any interference problems from cable TV to telephones to audio interference caused by RF picked up on a speaker leads. Particularly well suited for applications such as line filters in switch mode power supplies and are also commonly used in desktop computers, industrial electronics, office equipment, and consumer electronics such as TVs and audio equipment. Ferrite beads. Ferrite chokes. Unlike a typical core inductor, the bead requires no coiling of wire through wire cable from a circuit, though I better start that again. Unlike a typical core inductor, the bead requires no coiling of wire. The wire cable from a circuit may be coiled around it or simply pass through it. This effectively increases the inductance of the wire or wires. The inductance range is rather limited to RF, used for removing RF energy that exists within a transmission line structure, PCB trace, to remove unwanted RF energy. Chip beads are used as high-frequency resistors, attenuators that allow DC to pass while absor absorbing RF energy and dissipating it as heat. Come in hollow and leaded core versions. The applications of these ferrite beads are often slipped over cables that radiate RF. Computers, dimmers, fluorescent lights, motors, etc. Ferrite beads are also placed on cables entering receiving equipment to prevent external RF from entering and contaminating signals in the cable runs. The bumps on computer and appliance cables, mouse keyboard monitors are usually a ferrite bead coated by the plastic cord coating. Next are ceramic core inductors. These inductors are a special ceramic core that surpasses many ferrite core type inductors in terms of high frequency operation, low IDC, high SRF, high Q, and tight tolerances. Application used in LC resonant circuits such as oscillators and signal generators, used in impedance matching circuit isolation and RF filtration, found in mobile phones, Bluetooth devices, wireless instruments, as well as audio, TV, and telecom devices. Next inductor type is a is an antenna rod ferrite core and phenolic core. Well, these look like the ones you see in AM radios. Description. Commonly used in antenna applications where narrow bandwidths are required, the core material or rod on which the coil is wound is either ferrite, powdered iron, or alternatively phenolic, essentially an air core. The magnetic core versions are far more popular, but the phenolic cores provide higher operating frequencies. Application as antennas, ferrite cores with 800 permeability rods are suitable in 100 kilohertz to 100 megahertz range. Well, that that is worth um, pointing out. And I should maybe add that in the comment section below, just as a notable fact. I want to know this kind of information. As antennas, ferrite cords with 800 permeability rods are suitable in 100 kilohertz to 100 megahertz range. The 125 permeability rods are suitable in the 550 kilohertz to 1.6 megahertz range. The 40 permeability rods are suitable in the 30 megahertz range. The 20 permeability rods are suitable in the 150 megahertz range as the core's permeability decreases the operating frequency increases so note to self to just study that 
little bit of information there and see if I can actually research more of the different uh, bandwidth and permeability as it relates to permeability. Okay, the next and last type of inductor is the current sense inductor. And this is used to sense current passing through conductors specified by frequency range, often come with a center tap. In the application, used in high current, low profile point of load converters, DC to DC converters in distributed power systems, and DC to DC converters for field programmable gate arrays, found in PDAs, notebooks, desktop servers, and battery powered devices. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I should have said this at the beginning of the video rather than the end, but I am not an expert. And I always like to emphasize that. So I am an enthusiast of electronics, and I'm actually just trying to learn things myself. So hopefully it's been helpful to you, and uh, thank you very much for watching. And please subscribe, because I might make more videos like this. Okay, take care. Have a good day.